Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at my old 1981 Honda CM400 motorcycle. So the problem with the bike is that the speedometer is messed up. When I'm riding along even at low speeds the needle will go up to 80 and kind of wiggle there and then it'll go to zero and stay there for a little while and then go back to 80. It'll just kind of keep doing that back and forth as I'm riding along. Now the other day I was riding around at low speeds uh, in the yard without my helmet on and I could hear kind of a whirring or clicking or grinding noise. Something is making noise up there in the speedometer. So let's get it off the bike, take it apart and see if we can figure out what's wrong. So I'm taking a look at the speedometer here and it looks like it's held on to the bike with this nut right here and then this connection of course to the cable that goes down to the front wheel. There's also a wiring harness that comes out of the back of it that looks like it goes into the headlight bezel. So I think what we'll do first is pull the headlight out and then see if we can disconnect that wiring harness and then we can remove this from the bike. Okay, to remove the headlight there's two Phillips head screws on either side of the bezel that need to come out. So we'll pull those out first. Here's what the screw looks like that holds on the headlight bezel. You can see it's got a shoulder washer and a lock washer on it too. And now the headlight should just pull out of here. And now that the headlight is out, we can just unplug it to get it off the bike. So I've traced out the wires coming from the speedometer and it looks like they end up being this green one right here and then there's a brown one right here. Now you can see these are connectors of sorts behind some kind of plastic shrouding. So all we should have to do is pull these wires out of the connector. Hopefully the wires won't pull apart. And then I should be able to fish that wire out through the back of the headlight bezel. Hopefully this is visible and in focus, but here's the wires from the speedometer now kind of pulled out from the bezel and I just brought them around here so you can see the brown and green wires. So we're now taking a look at the back side of the speedometer and what I'm going to do next is remove the speedometer cable. You can see this is just sort of a thumb wheel and it should come off just by hand. Yep, there it is. It's loose. So we'll just unthread that and now you can see I've got it out of the way there. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove these two acorn nuts and I think the speedometer assembly will slip out of here and this back bezel will stay on the bike. So to remove this I'm going to use a 10 millimeter wrench and just loosen these acorn nuts. So after removing the nut we got a rubber grommet, a bushing, a flat washer, and the nut itself. Okay so now I think the speedometer should just come out of here. And there it is. And there's what the inside of the speedometer bezel looks like. Anyway the only other thing that's in here is sort of a rubber, I guess I'll call it a gasket, for around the speedometer and then another rubber grommet here for where the wires exit. So it turns out that this thing is just held together with a trim ring right here. You can probably see this chrome strip and not sure if the camera is going to focus well on it or not but you may be able to see here that on either side of the trim ring it's just kind of crimped over around and there's sort of a lip on that. To get it apart what we're going to need to do is kind of just pry up on this inner part of the lip so that it becomes vertical so to speak and then this should just pull out. Now in order to get it off the website recommended using a hose clamp to go around the outer part of the trim ring to help prevent it from deforming as you pry up on the inner part of the lip. Now they also recommended using a better tool than just a little screwdriver but this is all I have to work with so I'm going to make the best of it. I'm also not sure if I'm going to be able to reuse this trim ring or if I'm going to have to buy a replacement. But at this point, I think I'm just going to go ahead and give it a try and see if I can at least get this thing apart and we'll worry about getting it back together later. So I've got the hose clamp on here. It's not too tight, but snug enough to hold everything in place. And what I'll do now is take this little screwdriver and try and get under the lip of the trim ring and just pry it gently up. Now everything that I've read says that you've just got to take your time and work on this slowly and try not to lift the whole thing up at once. We're going to have to take several passes around the trim ring and just kind of work it up a little more on each pass until it's roughly vertical. So here goes, let's see what we can do. I'm not sure if you guys can see what's going on here but I think I found a method that's sort of working. I take this screwdriver and put it so the blade is parallel to the vertical part of the speedometer case here. 
and then I get it in here and I just kind of turn it almost like I'm trying to tighten a screw so that this bottom edge of the screwdriver gets under the lip. So I just kind of turn it a little bit and watch it bend up a little and then just kind of move forward. And again, we want to go slow. We don't want to pry the whole thing all up at once. So just little increments. And I'm just going to have to keep going around and around as I get that lip a little more vertical each time. So I'm starting to make some progress here. Now one thing to note is that with my kind of screwdriver twist method, I realized I was marking up this inner part of the bezel here. So I put some black tape around to try and protect the finish of that. The other thing that I found is that I'm starting to move up to my bigger screwdriver. And I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera or not, but the end of this screwdriver is bent a little bit. This was probably used to pry something at one point in the past. And that actually seems to be helping. I'm able to kind of get under the lip a little better with this and just kind of work things loose. And it seems to be not putting as much pressure on this side of the bezel. So I'm going to keep working with this one and see if we can get this the rest of the way. So I've been working on this for a little while now, maybe a half an hour or so. You may be able to see my tape it didn't really work here. I probably should have used something better than electrical tape. So what I found seems to be working, and I wish I had thought of this earlier, is I have this pair of wire cutters that's used to cut wire kind of at the end here. Now hopefully the camera is focused well enough on this so you guys can see that this nice sharp cutting edge gets under the lip pretty well and then it's got this nice rounded edge so that we can kind of very gently pry everything up. What I've done now is I've added a piece of duct tape here to try and protect the outer edge of the ring, which honestly I've actually kind of marked it up a bit with the hose clamp. I didn't think to put any tape under it or anything to prevent that when I tightened this on here, so it did get marked up a little bit. Now you can see it's loose, it's spinning on there, but I've got to get that last kind of bit of the lip bent up so this will drop off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this set so that this part of the claw goes under the ring and then I'll just kind of gently work down on it and just bend it ever so slightly as I go around the trim ring here and this seems to be working great to kind of straighten up that last bit of the lip okay and there it is it's a part but one thing I forgot to do was pull this knob off of the side for the trip odometer so I'm gonna try and do that now a lot of these speedometers have a little screw at the end that you would remove and then these would slide off. Mine doesn't have the screw. Now I've been trying to pry on this thing for quite a while and it's not coming off. So I'm going to grab my heat gun, heat this up a bit and see if I can get it off that way. I ended up heating this up too much. I heated up the knob and then I had a glove on and when I tried pulling it off you might be able to see that the inner part of the knob just kind of melted in a little bit so I quick took the heat away tried to come up with another idea so what I did is I kind of scrunched in the boot that's here the rubber boot that normally protects that shaft put a small pair of vice grips on here and then I took my spudger tool and I got it in here and I'm holding the vice grips kind of like this and I'm prying out on the spudger tool and this is taking a fair amount of force but the knob is moving so I'm just going to kind of go slow so I don't launch this thing across the garage. And there, it finally popped off. As you can see, the knob should still be serviceable. I should be able to put it back on when it's time to reassemble, but it's kind of melted in there. So if I can find a replacement, maybe I'll do that. So we should be able to pull this apart now. So here is the speedometer. Now, you can see that mine is actually in great cosmetic shape. No problems there. So be careful with this to try and keep it that way. I also want to note the mileage here. I don't want to change that if I can help it. Uh, unlike an unscrupulous used motorcycle dealership, I don't need to roll that back. In fact, I'd rather have that reflect the true mileage of the bike. What I think I need to do now is remove these two screws here to get the mechanism to separate from the back part of the housing so that we can get at whatever is in here because I think that's where the problem is. So here's a look at the guts of what's going on here. Now I've got my little deck bit engaged where the speedometer cable would and if I turn this hopefully you guys can see that things are spinning and moving. I heard a little bit of squeaking there maybe you guys heard that too so I'm wondering if that's indicating part of the problem but anyway for right now you can see that as I turn this 
this shaft moves. There's a worm gear in here that's engaging teeth on this shaft, which is engaging this gear, which is in turn operating the odometers, both the trip odometer and the regular odometer. So that part of everything is working okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my drill and I'm going to see if I can get this to spin. Oh, there it goes. Now you can see it's acting up. Okay, so now we were able to finally reproduce the problem here. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on. So it looks like the way that this thing works is that this silver piece right here, hopefully you can see the needle kind of moving as I spin it. Now what ends up happening is the cable engages back here and turns a shaft inside of here, which rotates this magnetic disc. As that magnetic disc rotates, it must cause an electric field or a magnetic field that allows this thing to kind of move and stay where it is. The faster this thing rotates, the more this thing moves and gets up to the end of the needle. And then the slower it goes, the more it goes back down to zero. So having looked around in here, everything actually looks like it's in good condition and everything feels like it's moving pretty freely as if it's all lubricated just fine as well. It seems like the problem is that this piece is loose and not allowing the magnet to spin in the proper orientation to engage the needle properly. You can see with it kind of all the way out like this, it drags on the magnet and kind of sticks and stays. So I think the fact that this thing is no longer properly connected in here is the root of the problem. So I'm not 100% sure as to what's going on here, but I'm fairly certain that there was a piece that was sort of swaged or press fit on the end of this housing that kept it locked into place of this plate. And it looks like that piece over time has failed or kind of worked its way out. And this thing is no longer in there securely. So I think what my plan of attack here is going to be is to try and reassemble this thing. Now there's a couple of tabs on the end of it that line up to grooves in the plate. So I've got to find the right orientation and alignment to get this shoved back in and kind of properly positioned. Once I get it there, I need to find a way to keep it in place. I think I'm going to try and use some kind of epoxy or glue, maybe JB Weld. I'm not sure. I'll see what I've got around the shop here. And so I'm doing a little test to see if the glue that I want to use is going to work on this. I'll explain that in a little while. But that glue is setting up and drying right now. So I figured while it is, I would work on lubricating everything in here. So I started off with some 3-in-1 oil and I put that sort of in here so that it would seep in and lubricate the mechanism in here. And then I used a little bit of that on the gears here, but it seemed a little too light for those. So I went and I got my trusty Napa Sil Glide. This is actually brake grease, but seems to work for other things too. Now I put the slightest amount on my finger and I worked it into wherever there were exposed gears. So here on the side, and then this point here, and this point here. And now everything seems to be running smoothly. So what we'll do now is we'll use my drill with the square bit. I'll engage that to where the cable would normally go on the speedometer. And you should be able to see, and maybe hear, that everything is running fairly well now. So it looks like my Ryobi can only get up to about 15 miles an hour, but seems like we're okay. So the glue that I'm going to use is E6000, I don't know if this is epoxy or what it is, but I've used it on metal in the past and it seems to hold up just fine. And it's not quite as permanent as something like JB Weld, so if we ever needed to chip it out of here, we could probably do that without too much trouble. Now the one thing I need to keep in mind with this is how this is all going to go back together. So you can see if I position the speedometer mechanism into the rear bezel, you can see there's not a whole lot of room around this piece for squeeze out. So what I think I'm actually going to do is do this in two stages. I'm going to pull this piece back out of here and put just a small amount of the E6000 under this lip, between the lip and the backing plate. Just enough to try and seal that up. And then once that cures in 12 to 24 hours or so, I'll come back in and I'll put this on, put the screws in, 
And then I'll put a bead of E6000 around the outside here, which of course will then bond the bezel to this piece as well. But that'll keep it nice and rigid, and then we'll have sort of two layers of protection to hopefully fight vibration and things like that. So I've separated the pieces there. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this out on a piece of plastic over here and then use my screwdriver to just take little bits at a time and kind of work it in under this lip. I've got probably enough of it in there. Now I need to kind of find this thing's home position again and lock it into place. Now as I do that, I want to be careful that I don't get any squeeze out on that worm gear that's in there. Otherwise we'll have more problems than we solve here. As you may be able to see, I've got some E6000 in there now. It kind of mixed a little bit with the oil and grease that's in there, so I don't know how effective that's really going to be. But I'm going to let it sit overnight, and we'll work on this tomorrow. So the speedometer's been sitting for about a day now. This e 6000 is all cured up in here, and this feels tight now. I, I can't easily break it loose with my hands. I, I don't know if I put extra force on here, if it would break loose. I don't really know how effective this actually is. I'm going to put this clip back in place now, and this arm right here goes underneath this star wheel that's attached to the trip odometer lever and helps provide some of the ratcheting mechanism. And before I go any further with the reassembly, I'm just going to double check with the drill here and make sure that everything is running the way that it should. As you can see, the needle seems to be moving up kind of normally. It's not jumping or sticking or anything like that. So I think we're good to go here. Okay, so next up I'm going to reassemble the mechanism to the rear bezel. So this just drops in place like this so that the face of the speedometer is sort of parallel with the back face of the bezel. And I'll just tighten up these screws. So one thing I'll mention, I'm not sure if you guys can see it here or not. I stripped the heads of these screws a little bit when I was taking them off. They were in there really tight. In fact, I ended up having to use a pair of vice grips to grab the sides and crack them loose. So when I tighten these up, I want to try and be careful that I don't strip those heads out any further, but that I still get them tight enough to hold everything together. So I'm going to bring in the outer bezel of the speedometer. I'm going to put this in here sort of temporarily. Before I put this together for the final time, I do want to clean all everything up, clean the glass, make sure I clean this face, get any fingerprints off of it and whatnot. But for right now, we're just doing this temporarily so that I can work with the speedometer with the back facing up and not damage the face or the needle at all. What I'll do now is take some more of the E6000 and I'm going to apply it all in here so that we get a nice fillet of epoxy, or like I said, whatever this is, in here to kind of hold everything together. Now just for fun, I did a test on a scrap piece of metal with a nut on it, just to see how well the E6000 would hold, and it seems like it works pretty well metal to metal. So I'm going to squirt a little bit of this onto just a scrap piece of plastic I have over here off camera. And I'm going to use a screwdriver to help apply this. It, something like a popsicle stick or something might be better, but I just don't have anything like that on hand. This should work, and as long as I clean the screwdriver off when I'm done, it shouldn't cause any problems. So I've got a pretty good fillet of E6000 around this interface here. Now the nice thing about this stuff is it kind of self-levels and kind of gets where it needs to get. So I was able to just kind of goop it on with the screwdriver and kind of push it in so that it got into the crevices but then after it sits for a minute or two it kind of flows a little bit and evens itself out. So as I was applying this I did get a few little stringers of material in the threads here so I wiped those off and made sure that the threads were clean all around. So the thing to do now is to just leave this undisturbed and let it cure. I have found the E6000 takes about 24 hours or so to set completely. So we'll come back tomorrow and finish the reassembly. So the E6000 is dry now and everything feels pretty secure. If I actually poke at the E6000 with my fingernail I can tell it's a little bit soft and rubbery but if I try and move this piece it doesn't move at all. And just to make sure that everything is moving freely I'm going to first test this by hand and I don't hear any squeaking or feel any binding. So if I test it out on the drill 
you can see everything's looking pretty good at this point. So what I'll do next is take the speedometer assembly back out of the housing. So even though I tried real hard while I was working on this not to get any fingerprints on the face of the speedometer, I did get a couple. So I'm using a paper towel with some Windex sprayed on it to kind of gently clean this and get rid of the fingerprints. And of course I've already used the Windex on the glass here so that when I put everything together it should be almost factory fresh. So obviously the two halves are together now and one thing I needed to do was make sure that this rubber boot was seated properly. After I had put them together I realized that this lip that's on the edge was kind of pushed in a little bit so I just worked it back out and it looks like it's okay now. So now for the hard part. I've got the trim ring back into position so that it's pushed up against the lip of the speedometer here and that this edge that I bent up is sticking up all around the back part of the bezel here. So what I'm going to try and do is start working on bending the lip of the trim ring back over. I'm going to use this pair of bent needle nose pliers I have. This particular set of pliers doesn't have any ridges on the inside so I thought it might work the best. It's also not exactly pointy at the end and I want as much surface area here as I can to kind of help roll it over. So what I'll do is I'll double check and make sure that the trim ring is pulled up as far as it can go. So then what I'll do is I'll push down on the back of the speedometer so it's in good contact with the front bezel. And just like when I took it apart, I'm going to go slow, do a little bit at a time, and work my way around several times to get everything back into shape. Okay, so I've worked my way around I guess actually two times now. And what I ended up doing is I ended up using this pair of needle nose pliers. Now, even though I don't have quite the surface area that I'd like on these, what I'm finding is that the ridge that's on here is actually helping. So what I'm able to do is just kind of get this on here and grab the edge of the trim ring with one of the ridges and then just kind of gently roll it as I work my way around. And that seems to be working. So I'm just going to keep doing that until I get this rolled over enough to where this isn't helping anymore and then try and cinch it down with the flatter ones. So I've got that all crimped in place here as you can hopefully see. It actually didn't come out too bad. Obviously this edge is going to be a little bit rough now compared to what it was from the factory but I've got it pretty well peened over and secure. Nothing's moving around, everything feels tight and I believe the rubber gasket that's in here is pressed up against the back of the bezel pretty well so it should still be weather tight even though I don't ride the bike in the rain anyway. Now what I ended up finding worked best is I ended up graduating to a larger pair of needle nose pliers that I had again with the ridges on them and I used it to kind of pry the edges over until it was pretty close to being flush on the bezel and then I switched over to this pair of lineman pliers again put some tape on here to protect the bottom surface and then was able to kind of crimp everything in place just going around slowly. Okay, so I've got it all back together except for the trip odometer knob. We'll talk more about that at the end of the video. For now, I'm going to just get this put back on the bike and test it. Before I put this back on the bike, let's do one more test with the drill just to make sure nothing happened while I was putting the seal on. Looks good. I think we're ready to go. Before I put this on the bike, I've got to reinstall the backlights here. Just push these into place. One last thing before we finish up. Now you may remember from earlier in the video when I tried taking the trip odometer knob off, I heated it up and I ended up melting the inside part of it. Now, it's really not that bad. I could put this back on the bike. But I went on eBay just to see if I could find another one. And I found this whole speedometer for about five bucks yeah, I had to pay six or seven bucks shipping, so I'm not sure if it was worth it for just a knob. But I wasn't sure if I was going to need other spare parts that might come off of this too. Turns out I really don't need anything else, so I'm just going to pull the knob off of this for now.
so that's pretty much going to wrap things up for the speedometer repair on the old 1981 Honda CM400C. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.